Let S be a subset of Rn. Let X be an element in the convex hull of S. The Karateotoris theorem states that X can be written as the convex combination of at most n plus 1 elements of S. We know by definition, X in the convex hull of S means X can be written as the convex combination of elements of S. So the key here is the maximum number of elements that we need. In order to see that this theorem actually states something useful, let's look at the following example. Suppose that S consists of these four points in R2. Then the convex hull of this will be this red shaded region. Now let's pick X to be in the convex hull, say this green point here. In this case, X cannot be written as the convex combination of these three points, but it can be written as the convex combination of these three points. So this theorem is not automatic, there is indeed something to prove. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pick u1 up to uk from S such that X can be written as the convex combination of u1 up to uk, with the requirement that k is as small as possible. So if k is at most n plus 1, we are done. So assume that k is at least n plus 2. Because x can be written as a convex combination of u1 up to uk, there exists lambda 1 up to lambda k, not negative, such that lambda 1 u1 plus all the way to lambda k uk is x, and lambda 1 plus all the way up to lambda k is equal to 1. Notice that lambda i must be positive for all i from 1 up to k. That's because if lambda j is 0 for some j, then we don't really need uj to form the convex combination that gives us x, and that will contradict the minimality of k here. We're now going to let a denote the following matrix. So the columns are 1, u1, all the way to 1, uk. So this matrix A is going to have n plus 1 rows, where the top row will consist of all 1s. And because k is at least n plus 2, the nullity of A is at least 1. What that means is, we can find a d in Rk, where d is not identically 0, such that d is in the null space of A. In other words, a d is equal to 0. Now let's take p to be lambda 1 up to lambda k. Then what we know is the following. a times p is going to be 1 x. That comes from these equations. Now observe that since d is not identically 0, d must have at least one negative entry. Because in the left-hand side here, the first component is the sum of all these, and on the right-hand side, it says it has to be 0. So if we look at p plus t times d, there will be a limit on how large t can be in order for the components to remain non-negative. So there will be a maximum value for t such that p plus t times d is still greater than only 0, and at that value, we'll obtain a point, say q, where Q is going to have at least one zero component. But if we look at this Q, it also satisfies A times Q equals 1x. And what this is saying is, we don't really need all columns of A in order to get 1x. Now, all the components of Q are non-negative as well, but there's at least one zero component in Q, that means that there is a convex combination of fewer than k elements from S that will give us x, and that contradicts the minimality of k.